Learn five easy and creative ways to use Altenew mixed media inks and pigment ink pads on your paper craft and card making projects. Hi, I'm Amber Rain Davis from NotableInk.com. Welcome back to the channel. Here I have the rosy embossing folder and two new lines of Altenew mixed media ink. These are their pigment inks and on the bottom I have Glacier Caves and on the top is the Summer Afternoon ink family. I'm going to start off with Caribbean Sky, which is from the Glacier Caves ink, pigment ink family. And I'm going to take the ink pad directly to the rosy 3D embossing folder. Now, the Altenew 3D embossing folders are super deep in their embossing. It's, it's a highly debossed and embossed look that you get with a lot of detail. So it's pretty easy to ink up the raised surface without getting it on the embossed area. If you do get a little ink on there, you can wipe it off really easily. Now I've added the Persian mixed media ink pad and I'm just pouncing this on where I swiped the Arctic ink. I'm pouncing the Persian ink on to get a little bit more texture from the foam pad itself. And here you can see I'm just using my finger to clean off the little bit of stray ink that I had on the debossed area. I'm going to close up the embossing folder. Ideally, you want to put your card down and leave it alone. Um, I adjusted mine a little bit, and you'll see I'll get just a little stray ink on the card, but it doesn't end up being a problem at all. I went ahead and ran that through my die cutting machine, and you can see that it, it's embossed this beautiful rose. You can clean off your embossing folders really easily with a baby wipe. That's what I'm using here. You could also use a microfiber cloth or paper towel, whatever you have on hand, the ink wipes off very easily. The second way I'm going to use the pigment ink pads is just to finger blend it onto the card. And then the third way is I'll take the ink pad directly to the embossed areas. So using my finger to blend on the ink, I was able to get a soft look exactly where I wanted it. By rubbing the ink pad over it, then I'm able to really just pick up on those areas that are sticking up the highest and get some extra contrast in there. Now I got a little stray ink of that paper bag on the main petal there, so I'm just gonna do a little more blending with my finger. Of course, you could also do this with your blending brushes or blending foams, but I thought that that would get into the crevices too much. I stamped two sentiments from Woven Stripe Stamp Set that you'll see next and put those on sentiment strips and added them to the card. This card was super easy to color with the mixed media inks and you can see it has a ton of impact with the 3D embossing. The stamp set I mentioned earlier was Woven Stripes. This is where the sentiments came from and this is a great background stamp set for a graphic look. In my case, I wanted a little bit more of a distressed look. The fourth and most traditional way to use mixed media and pigment ink is to ink up your stamps with it. Here I'm putting it on the Woven Stripe stamp set and I haven't conditioned the stamp set yet, but that's okay when I find anyway when you're using pigment inks. They don't bead up like your dye inks do if you have an unconditioned stamp. I'm just adding a little bit of that Caribbean sky to this as well so I get a mix of colors and depth. I'm just gonna remove some of the pigment ink with a microfiber cloth because again, I don't want a super clean stamping of this background. I want it to be a little patchy and a little distressed. I think that adds a lot more interest to the card than getting a perfectly stamped. So here you see I have kind of a modeled look to the background, which is what I was going for. And I have a leftover piece of deli paper that has a gel print on it. So this is a ghost print. I really was just pulling these two prints while I was cleaning off my five by seven gel press. And I'll link the video in the top right hand corner. In that video, what I created was a handmade gel print journal, and I show you how to bind that together. So I'll be sure to link that in the top right hand corner. I have a large Nouveau gel pen here, and I'm just using that to add glue com to completely cover the front of this card panel. Another way that I like to add deli paper to my cards is with gel medium. So if you have a matte gel medium, you can put a thin coat of that on with a media spatula or even with a rubber spatula from your kitchen. Um, that works great. Those are my two favorite ways to add deli paper when I'm collaging or adding it to a full panel like this. 
So I'll just press that on. I'm just gonna smooth it down with my fingers, but you could also use a Teflon bone, fo bone folder if you wanna flip it over and just run your bone folder across the back. And then I'll go ahead and tear off the excess. Of course, you can trim it on your paper trimmer, but I like the jagged edge that you get when you tear the paper. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to like and subscribe. For the sentiment, I'm using the Modern Hello stamp set. This is another new set, and it's super cool because the Hello is in a block print, and then the sub sentiment is in script, and it wraps itself around the Hello. So you have more of a broken font that just wraps around the Hello, and it looks really seamless. So I'm gonna stamp the hello with a mix of the blue pigment inks and just adding a little bit of the sapphire just cause I wanted it to be a touch darker, but not too dark because I want to stamp friend in black pigment ink in the obsidian ink. And I wanted you to still be able to read the hello. I might have gone a smidge dark with the hello, um, but I still think it's fairly legible. And this is the fifth way to use pigment inks. Because pigment inks are more opaque, you can layer them on top of each other. So that's the perfect stamp set to use these pigment inks with. Just layer your colors up. While I liked the direction this card was going in, I felt like it was a little boring without another element. So I pulled out dovetail butterflies and picked the largest butterfly. And I stamp it with the Persian Blue Mixed Media Ink. Now you could leave it just like this, but again, I felt like it was just a little boring and needed a little extra something. This um, green piece of deli paper that I have here, again, was from that handmade gel print journal that I referenced. And so I'm gonna stamp the top of this butterfly with obsidian pigment ink on top of this green paper. Now this green paint that's on this paper is a metallic paper, so it has a beautiful shimmer to it when it catches the light. And I'll go ahead and die cut this and layer this on top of the butterfly. It'll add just a little bit more dimension, a little more interest to what right now is a bit of a boring kind of blue butterfly. So I'll use the coordinating die set run that through my die cut machine. And here I've just put adhesive on the center of the butterfly. I want to leave the wings free so that I can slide a foam square under each one of them to add just a little bit of dimension. So it gives the idea that we've got some movement to this card. Here's the finished card and I love all the texture on this card, the see-through deli paper where you can see that print and pattern coming through from underneath. This video is part of an all new blog hop, so visit my blog post. It, there's a link in the description below for a chance to win a giveaway. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.